Make sure you guys get your five stocks from Moo Moo. Use my link, deposit at least $100, and you could get up to five stocks, each of which could be valued up to $3,500. Link down below. Literally free money, guys. Get on that. And now let's talk about what ended up happening today because let me tell you, we had one heck of a green day. The S&P closed up 1.6%. We had the NASDAQ up 2.5%. The Russell went up almost 3%. And we had the Dow go up one2 as volatility. The volatility index, also known as the VIX, went down 9.3 percent so let's talk about it guys we all know this morning we got that big pop in the markets because of the whole russia ukraine situation we had some troops get pulled back from attack positions that ended up you know popping these markets up you know alleviating the fear the stress the uncertainty and that's what caused this run-up and you guys can see spy all throughout the day traded between $443 as support and roughly 446 as resistance and based on the close today we did not break out in uh, either direction right we didn't break out above 446 which would have been good for the bulls and we didn't break under 443 which would have been good for the bears so heading into tomorrow and the rest of this week for that matter i'm going to be looking at spy in this tight trading window, three points, roughly three bucks on SPY. And I want to see what direction it picks. Same thing with Triple Q. Let me pop up Triple Q and show you guys. We covered this already in my video earlier. Well, at this point, it seems like Triple Q did break out. Wow, look at this. It popped over 355 heading into close, and now it's uh, actually holding above 355. So scratch that. SPY is still in the trading window, right? Trading range. Triple Q's not. This one's already breaking out of the 355 resistance, which was resistance all day, stemming back from, you know, the beginning of pre-market at about 4 a.m. here on the East Coast. So nice close on Triple Q, but... I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but we are still well within a downtrend on the larger time frames. Look at this four-hour chart. We're under both moving averages on Triple Q and on SPY, right? Futures are actually moving down a bit right now when I'm filming this. It's currently 6.15 p.m. on the East Coast. We have the NASDAQ futures down about 0.2%, Dow down 0.1%, S&P down about 02 Russell down 0.1%. So we are seeing some of the gains from today um, being taken away in the futures market, and uh, we'll see if that continues. We'll see if that continues and again we're under these main moving averages on spy and on triple q on the four hour charts and on the 20 day chart so that means bears in the grand scheme of things even though we did have a great day today bears are still in charge so drop me your thoughts in the comments guys what do you think do you think we're moving higher from here do you think today's rally was a bull trap based on the technicals it does seem like today's rally very well could be a bull trap. So what do you think? Drop me a comment. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Make sure to ch uh, check out my Patreon if you guys want all my moves, Discord access, morning videos exclusive to the top uh, Patreon members. That's linked down below if you guys are interested. And let's talk about some stocks now. We had about, uh, well, we had a lot of uh, companies report. And we're going to talk about six of them in this video with one stock at the end, which didn't report yet, but I do believe their earnings are right around the corner. So let's talk about Airbnb. Airbnb is the one that I was really looking at for this week. And this stock is going ballistic after market hours, guys. Look at this. Even during the day, this thing went up 6% on the day. It went up 10 bucks. Now it's up it went to the mid 90s at one point and mind you it closed at 180 so it popped another 15 bucks after hours now it's sitting up about seven bucks as it did cool down a bit after that initial pop so airbnb i have all the earnings here on my notes guys so we're not going to do a live reaction today but we're going to talk about them either way airbnb crushed their numbers guys they crushed their numbers q4 revenue came in at 1.53 billion dollars eps came in at eight cents so they made a little profit there and what's even better is the guidance guys guidance for these upcoming quarters well really for the next quarter and the bookings numbers they're looking pretty good so q1 sales they're looking at about 1.41 to 1.48 billion versus the 1.24 billion estimated so their guidance for q1 sales 
blows the estimate out of the park, and they see Q1 bookings, which is a very good sign, exceeding pre-pandemic levels for the first time. That's a good sign, guys. The fact that the bookings are now higher than they were before the pandemic. And what happened during the pandemic? Well, a lot of things got shut down. Travel went down. Numbers got pretty ugly for the uh, companies like Airbnb and any uh, and any travel-oriented company. So it's great to see that the numbers for at least Airbnb are starting to come back up. And that's why we're seeing this massive pop after hours. It's not for it's not for no reason, guys. These numbers were very strong. So from 180 to 195, this thing popped 8% after hours on top of the 6% that it went up on the day. And if I pull up this four-hour chart, take a look at this, guys. Four-hour chart on Airbnb. This is showing a uh, potential test. Well, it is testing. It actually broke above it earlier in the after-hour session. This is showing the fact that 185 were breaking. That's showing the strength in the bulls right now. 185 was resistance in the beginning of December, heading into the middle of December. We're now breaking out of it. This is a very good sign, and I've said it before. I'll say it again. Now that Airbnb is moving past this point, I think 200s is coming, whether it's this week, a month from now, a couple weeks. I don't even know. Obviously, nobody knows. But with these earnings, guidance, momentum, it's looking good. The chart's looking good. So that's ABNB. We also had Upstart today, UPST. They went up 4.3% at close up about four dollars and fifty cents and now after market hours are you ready for this guys the stock went from 109 at close like i said all the way to 149 so this thing shot up 35 percent and now it's starting to come down a bit but still it's up 23 percent after market hours so they did numbers and these numbers are going to blow your socks off right 89 cents of eps versus 51 cents estimated we had revenue of 305 million versus 262 million so they crushed eps crushed revenue q1 sales they're looking at 295 to 305 million versus 258.3 million so that is well above the estimate for q1 sales and the full year 22 sales are well above the estimates as well they're looking at 1.4 billion in full year 22 versus 1.21 billion estimated so nice nice numbers for upstart great EPS, revenue, guidance, pretty much everything you can ask for. The stock, it's doing well. It's crushing it, and that's why it's up 40%, or it was up. It's still up a lot, up 25% after market hours. So upstart at this point, guys, it's starting to reverse. Look at this. We've been uh, uh, you know, downtrending for a good three, four months, two, three months, something like that from the beginning of November at 339, I can't believe this stock was over 400. That's insane. This thing went down 80% from 401 to 75. And clearly in that time period, a uh, couple of months time period, it was downtrending under the moving averages. Now we're breaking out of the moving averages and we're trading at a multi-week high. So I think potentially this momentum on upstart could continue on the back of these uh, great numbers, earnings, guidance, all that great stuff. And what really um, is going to be important for this company, guys, is their next quarter. If they're able to get a couple of quarters in a row that are strong with good guidance after getting completely bludgeoned 80%, this stock might be able to make a turnaround. So Upstar for the next couple of weeks, months, I think is worth watching. I really do, based on these numbers that they gave out. But on the other uh, flip side here, Roblox not doing well. Roblox not doing well, guys. They went up 7% on the day. I guess a lot of people were expecting that these co uh, this company was going to crush it, so they were piling in before earnings. It went up 7% on the day, and now it's down about $11 after market hours. It gave back all of that gain and some, and it's pretty much down 15%. It's down double what it went up today. So that's not a good sign, guys. That's not a good sign because... They missed on EPS, which probably caused this, and maybe their growth wasn't as great as expected. We're going to talk about it. So EPS came in at negative 25 cents versus negative 14 cents estimated. So that obviously missed. We had revenue of $770.1 million versus $763.29 million estimated. So they beat revenue barely. Again, they missed EPS, 
and we got Q4 average daily users, or um, daily active users rather, up about uh, 33% year over year to about 49.5 million. Hours engaged, I guess, with their games and so forth, right? Obviously, we're about 10.8 billion, up 28% year over year. And they actually gave us their January numbers uh, for 22. Revenue. They're expecting revenue, or they saw roughly 203 to 206 million, and they uh, they reported daily active users of 54.7 million, up 32 percent year over year. So not too bad, I would say. Uh, but the stock's getting punished. Maybe it's because they lost a lot more money than expected. That EPS number missed. That's got to be it. Because their numbers are not that bad in terms of growth. You know, Q4 daily active users up 33%. And mind you, I haven't done a lot of research on Roblox, so I'm not sure if that daily active user number in terms of growth, I'm not sure if it's slowing down. Maybe they did 40% growth in the previous quarter. Now it's 33, so it might be for that reason as well. Um, that's for me to do more homework on and figure that out. But overall, Roblox, they missed EPS. Stock's getting punished. And at this point, going back to the four-hour chart, it is still well under the moving averages, and it's still in a downtrend, and it's clearly still in a bear market as it's down 60% from the $141 high, which was just back in the end of November, guys, not too long ago. So for Roblox, I wouldn't really touch it unless it started to reverse, and who knows? That could happen anytime. These stocks, Roblox being a speculative, unprofitable company, a piece of news comes out. Let's say Apple comes out and buys Roblox or Roblox, they report good numbers next quarter. This could be up 30, 40, 50%. It's that kind of stock. You know, it could catch fire quick. So watch out for it. We also have to talk about Viacom, which is now known as, get ready for this, guys. Paramount. They changed their name to Paramount to match their uh, streaming service. Their streaming service is called Paramount Plus, which admittedly, I've never even seen this streaming service. I mean, um, I've never used it, obviously. But hey, it's there. It exists. And now they're changing it, and this new name will be uh, will be uh, in, in effect on February 16th, so tomorrow. And the streaming service is I guess it launched about a year ago, which is why I probably, I mean, I really haven't heard about it. It launched about a year ago. Um, and I guess that's a good branding move, you know, changing from Viacom, CBS to uh, Paramount Plus or Paramount to match the Paramount Plus, um, you know, streaming service like Disney. They have Disney Plus, Paramount, they have Paramount Plus. Makes sense. I like that. And they did EPS of 26 cents, which is down from the dollar four a year ago, year over year, so that's not good. Sales came in at $8 billion, though, which beat the $7.49 billion estimated, so that's solid. And they added about 7.3 million Paramount Plus subs in uh, Q4, and now their total is about $32.8 million. So it's not a teeny tiny streaming service, guys. They have, they have 32.8 million subscribers. Really not too bad. And this stock, is uh, it's been reversing, if you guys take a look here, on this four-hour chart, it has been above the moving averages over the past couple of weeks when in the past couple of months before that, it was clearly downtrending. So that's a good sign. It's reversing. We're fighting now to hold a higher low right around this uh, 180 moving average as the stock is down on these earnings. So I'm going to be watching this on the four-hour. If we do end up bouncing, let's say, off 32 33. It is oversold now, mind you guys. Uh, we might be able to get back up mid-high 30s. And honestly, now that I'm looking at this, this really does look like an ascending triangle. Look at this. Clear resistance at about 37 as we are uptrending. So if we do pop at about 33, go to 37, that in and of itself is a 9% move. And if we break 36, 37, this thing might be flying towards the 40s. So watch out for Viacom now known as Paramount. We also had Wynn Resorts Report. Let's pop that up. They did EPS of $1.37 in the red, so they lost about $1.37 versus the $1.25 loss estimated. Revenue came in at $1.05 billion versus $994.08 million estimated. So missed EPS, beat revenue. Stock is pretty much, uh, well, it was unchanged. Wow, it kind of looks pretty volatile right now. Let me show you guys this. It shot up to 100 bucks, 101 dollars, 
which is a good sign initially, but then it shot back down to $91, which was about a 9-10% drawdown, and now it's sitting at about 93 bucks, pretty much erasing all of the gains from today, and mind you, this stock went up about 4.5% today alone. So when resorts, I've said this before, guys, I'll say it again. I think this stock is bound to reverse if it hits above 100. There's a reason why we hit 100 bucks and got rejected there. I mean, I've been saying this. 100 is a huge resistance on Wind Resort stemming back from November, early mid November. We got to break out of there. If that happens, next stop's 105. And if 105 were to break, Wind Resorts could really start gaining some steam, kind of like Marriott has. Let me show you guys uh, Marriott. MAR, Marriott International, they did EPS of $1.30 versus $0.99, cents, so they made money unlike Wynn, and they beat the estimate unlike Wynn as well, and they did revenue of 4.49, or 4.45 rather, excuse me, billion dollars versus $3.98 billion estimated, so they double beat, the stock's breaking out, it went up 6% on the day, we have an ascending triangle playing out, we're above the moving averages, Golden Cross, literally everything you could ask for, for a nice break out is playing out on Marriott and it actually just hit an all-time high today at about $181.30. So this one, although it might be a bit overbought, you can make that argument, it's moving in the right direction. It's breaking out bears or uh, bulls rather are taking control. This could end up ripping further. Give it a couple weeks, months. This could go to 200 bucks. I mean, that's the uh, momentum that it's on right now. And until the technicals prove me otherwise, that's what I'm sticking with. So Marriott is looking strong. NVIDIA is also starting to look strong, guys. Look, NVIDIA went up 9% on the day. We are breaking out of the moving averages slowly but surely. We have earnings coming up tomorrow after market hours. That's going to be huge. And this stock, if you guys know NVIDIA... It moves a lot during earnings, before earnings, through earnings, during earnings. This thing is going to be going bananas. So if we get a pop above a clear-cut break, let me show you guys this on the 20-day chart. Notice we closed right under uh, right under 267. If we break this point, and that was resistance last week, this is going to go potentially, and mind you, earnings could change this. We got to be patient and be uh, be careful. But overall, if the technicals play out, 267 breaks, we break into the 270s. This could go quickly to 285. 285 is the next gap. You guys can see it here um, based on this chart. You can see 285. That was resistance um, early in 2020, or rather early in January 22, so about a month ago. And if 285 breaks, we might be going 305. 300, 307, that's the next gap. So NVIDIA is another one, like Roblox. Like I said, not as crazy as uh, Roblox, but it can move in either direction very aggressively. And I have a feeling it's going to be breaking out to the upside. I'm not going to play the earnings, and I don't advise anybody to do that. And, and I'm not a financial advisor anyway. Uh, but from my experience, gambling on earnings is not smart. I'm not telling you guys what to do. Uh, but from my experience, again, I've lost money doing that more than I think I've made money. So I don't do it anymore because of that reason. But I could see this thing breaking out. But I could also be wrong on that. So for that reason, I'm staying on the sidelines. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. We covered a bunch of stocks, thoughts on the markets, charts, earnings. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. Make sure to drop me a comment and let me know your thoughts. And if you haven't done so already, join my Patreon if you want all my buy, sells, call outs, morning update videos, more access to me throughout the day, plus Discord access. All that, again, is on Patreon. Link down below. Or you guys can go to testosterfest.com slash Patreon. And if you want some free money, why not use my Moomoo link down below, deposit at least $100, and you could get up to five stocks, each of which could be valued up to $3,500. bucks. get your free money, link down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great one. Peace out.